Okay, I think we're back. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Perfect. So, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, I just sent out a message to everyone that we are up and running again. Um, okay. So, Ori, we'll back up and, and just say, you know, this. I know this has been a really tough time for all small businesses, especially local restaurants. And you all are always some of the folks who are keeping the community going. You provide the space for people to get together. You deliver the, the food that keeps people nourished. Um, so tell us a little bit about even before COVID started, why did you want to open Zaz in Hyde Park? And, and what's your background? And um, what are you trying to do with the restaurant? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Ulri. I'm the chef owner of Zaz in Hyde Park. Um, of uh, this year is actually my eighth year uh, being over in Hyde Park and Zaz, and um, it's been quite a journey, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, you know, it's um, you know obviously we, we've we've crossed different thresholds and and different um, different issues from time to time, but this one here is uh, is one to remember. I know that um, the, the, the the ironic thing is I just recently um, upgraded. I I decided to do a renovation and actually open up another space next to the existing space and we took over the other building and uh, so um, the construction actually just completed last week um, and so we were all excited and ready for a new chapter and, and um, you know basically we did it for, for not only for business sake but also for the, the, the patrons and the, the customers that are, were always asking us to upgrade and get bigger and get you know expand and so we, we decided to finally do that and uh, so we added another thousand square footage and um, the idea was to open up a space to give us flexibility to, um, you know, just to be more, be more flexible in the business in terms of hosting events or um, having larger gatherings, uh, community events or um, just different, you know, just have a different energy and, you know, we were all excited and ready to go. and then this happens. So, so, you know, there's a lot of things that are um, at stake here and uh, uh, again, a lot of investment at hand and we, um, a lot of, we just poured in a lot of money to this project. Um, and right now we made a decision to do meal plans and so forth to kind of get things moving in that direction and to keep, to keep the staff employed and also to be able to feed people who are unable to cook or unable to um, go to the stores for now. So um, it's a lot. It's a lot to juggle right now, but we, we, we try to do our best to make it work. So, you know, I know right now no one can come into the restaurant to eat there because it's, it's takeout only for all restaurants during this public health emergency. But um, after your renovations and after all of this is done, how many people can you seat in your restaurant? Tell us about the food concept and, and what you offer. Yeah, so we, um, so my, my history again for me, I'm from the Caribbean, uh, born and raised um, in Grenada. I lived also in Trinidad. And so my family, um, you know, I was raised by my grandparents, uh, kind of learning how to cook at a young age. So my food, uh, the, 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 main, the main spice I use a lot of Caribbean ingredients, but I, I love the fusion concept of adding an Asian as well. So it's like an Asian Caribbean fusion. And so um, it's, 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 it's popular in its own right. Uh, we do a lot of stuff that's different and unique. Um, so we, we're going to continue in that, continue in that, um, that, same, that same mantra and, and also provide a freshness. And I think that's one of our things is we're not, we're not fast food, we are fresh food. So we're going to provide, um, you know, still that same concept. We're going to add a few, few extra seating, uh, bring it up to around 45. Uh, as a, in the past, it was 19. So we're going to add some extra seating. We're going to add some space for like a live band, live, live music. Um, and, and so we, you know, we, we're going to cater to a lot, of the, a lot of requests from our customers as well in terms of adding some vegan options, um, adding, you know, options for just different diet restrictions that we always try to eat to. Um, so, you know, that, that part of the business for me is easy. I, I love creating food. I love creating recipes. Um, you know, obviously when, it, when at times like these, you know, my thing is to try to see how I can keep my staff and, you know, people right now, they're, they're worried about getting, getting a paycheck.
check or um, having the hours to feed their families. So um, we've been trying to do different things, be creative with it. Um, we, we're even going to be offering um, not only the meal prep, we're offering to go to people's homes that are that are not um, that the virus hasn't affected and be able to go and cook at people's homes as well. And so we're just trying to just stay stay innovative, stay creative with this whole um, process and, you know, again, just see how we can just cover all ends while we're doing it. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds amazing when people will finally be able to come back in and have up to 45 folks and events and, and that fresh food and, and for the community gathering. Uh, but we really need to make sure that you can survive until until then when people can come back in. So, you know, how many staff do you have? And tell us what the meal plans are and, and how much in sales you might have been, you know, what losses you're experiencing now after this kind of shutdown has, has been going on. Well, uh, in terms of losses, like I said, with the renovation, um, we 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 just spent upwards to fifty thousand between the renovation and um, just backed up, you know, from. So we we started the uh, before the Conoro came. We started doing like uh, limited hours to, to to finish the renovation. So we're already behind in terms of um, our our numbers, and so the idea was to reopen with a grand opening and you know do like we. Like in the past, we didn't open on Sundays, so we want to offer Sundays as well, Sunday brunches, and um, offer the space as a promotion and so forth. So that there's a different you know, marketing aspect we're going to tap into to kind of, you know, get money that we were losing from from closing those many days. And so, for me, the the main objective is trying to figure out just again being, you know, trying to figure out ways that we can keep revenue coming in. Um, a lot of my catering events, I do a lot of catering and so forth. A lot of that got canceled. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the, um, you know, we, there's only probably like on, on the schedule now, there's only two events that are still, still in stone. And that was, that's a wedding we have coming up in October and another event we have in August uh, that are still at hand. But for the most part, everything has got canceled. So that's affected my numbers drastically. Um, and you know, just, uh, you know, not being able to open the door itself, because uh, what I noticed last week with my numbers, when we were open to the public, people were not eating out as much. So then I had to weigh the option of um, keeping the doors open, yet being at a deficit in terms of paying my staff, paying my overhead, and not having limited foot traffic. Uh, so that was affecting my numbers. So then we decided to just close the door altogether and only do meal prep. Uh, the meal prep is, uh, we do it in, in stages. We have two days uh, meal prep. We do it on Mondays and on Thursdays. And uh, what we do is we pretty much open up um, a weekly menu and um, variety menu of different starch options, different uh, meat options, different veggie options. And people get to choose up from minimum of three days upwards to how many of the meals they wanted from like it could be from three to twelve for example and so they get to choose um, how many meals they want me to drop off we do we have a delivery service that's in-house and i'm using my staff to deliver so that this way they can have money coming in for themselves so we have a delivery fee um and you know it, the, the average for meal is twenty dollars per meal and Again, you can you can edit, you can tweak, you can change if you want to have a cup of rice and jerk chicken, or if you want to have a mac and cheese and you know side of veggie, whatever option we have, a kid friendly option as well. And so my goal is uh, as, again to listen to the fans and see what they would like in terms of options. So we, we try to put out a poll every week to see what some of your ass favorites you like on the meal prep, and we we, we move it like that. And where can folks go to find that poll and, and give their feedback or to order, kind of get on the list to, to get the meals delivered? So there's two options. Uh, there's an uh, Instagram platform and there's also Facebook and um, also the website. But mainly we, we have a lot of traction on uh, uh, social media platforms right now. So there's a lot of the, the uh, Facebook feeds and, and 
Instagram feeds. You get a lot of the options that way. And also the polls on Instagram. Got it. Okay. And so, I mean, how many people are you able to be delivering meal to? What's your idea? Like, how many people are ordering now? And how many would you really need to be ordering to kind of sustain what you're trying to do? So I think what we what did we notice a jump? We noticed a jump. Uh, we started doing it this week. Uh, we started this past Monday here and yesterday, and we noticed a jump um, from the first day we did about uh, I believe seventy something. Then it went up to high eighties. But we had to we had to reject the fuel based on the distance. Um, we were trying to we can we could only go but so far. So we trying to do it up to like fifteen um, radius uh, fifty mile radius. And we might open that up some more because we have a lot of faithful um, Zaz lovers, I like to call them, that are further out. <laughs> so we might open up the, the uh, radius a little bit further out and probably with a little additional cost as well um, and spread out the time frame to drop it off. So we're just trying to tweak. We're going to tweak as we go. Um, one of the things that I noticed, even because I do my own shopping, so one of the things that I noticed is um, as we put out the menus and the options you know when you go into these stores a lot of stuff is sold out or a lot of stuff is limited so um again these are things that i you know for me i'm the creator of the recipe and so forth so like i have to try to keep up with a menu based on what's available in the stores if you know what i'm saying so like you know i'm you know i'm confident in, in, in the chef for you know i can make different things so we're gonna go week by week with a menu selection and kind of see what's available because last week we were pretty much limited with salmon for example we do a lot of salmon options and so a lot of the salmon were sold out you know and so we had to try to find stores that had availability and and, and so these are some of the things that we're going we kind of work it through um, even the rice we do a lot of jasmine rice a lot of basmati rice on the menu and um, some of the rices are sold out too so Trying to find the options, trying to find the, the different variety of stuff that we use that we be we familiar with, or even the customers are familiar with some you know, certain flavors or certain options. Um, so but we're gonna tweak as we go and, and and edit as we go, so to speak, and just make it work. So for some of the people who are worried about the spread of the virus or not coming out or or interacting with folks. Can you tell us about you know, what's your staff doing to make sure that you all are totally safe and healthy as you're doing that food, food prep and delivery? So what we're gonna do starting next week, we didn't do this week, but we're gonna start actually checking temperatures of the staff to make sure that the staff is fine. And um, um, so far, because from what I'm hearing in the news, you, you can be contagious, well, you, you can't have it without showing any symptoms. So, um, which is really crazy to me. So we, we're going to try to check um, temperature and to make sure that the staff is you know, obviously we fully, in terms of being sanitized and you know, um, bleach, and Lysol, and wipes, and you know, all these different things we have we fully stocked. I even have some in my car as we speak. You know, we have it all over. <laughs> so, like for me, it's a matter of um, just keeping stuff on hand, but also making sure that the staff is being um, upfront about how they're feeling and not worried about trying to make a dollar. And that's something that uh, we have to keep in mind. Um, you know, at, at all times, the, the, the ultimate goal is not only to be safe, but also that we're delivering food that are, in, in, you know, that are safe to eat as well. Yeah, and, uh, and tell me what some of your staff are feeling. What are the stories of what they're going through a lot, you know, some of them might have kids now who are home because of the schools being closed. I mean, what are people having to juggle? Yeah, so that's another thing. A couple of my, two of my best help um, that has kids, they aren't able to work because the kids are home without daycare. And so um, that's something that uh, that they're dealing with. And, and you know, so for, for me as a, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to juggle that because again, I'm a small business and and there's only i'm limited in certain things that i would like to do in terms of help um and you know the the that's part of the thing that we haven't even my team and i we we trying to figure out what a way that we can still like, like i told you earlier with even the delivery service we kind of offering a couple of stuff you know, 
drive-in opportunities to deliver food, to get money, or just, you know, someone that wants to just clean dishes after we do the prep. We're just trying to find ways to kind of still keep people, put money in their pockets. And um, so there's, you know, a couple of staff that are, that are dear to my heart that are able to work so we just, we're going to try to find ways um and try to figure out how we can how we can help we haven't even got there yet and what do you think it'll take from the government side or funding just in the long term to get everyone back up on their feet especially our restaurants and small businesses well that's you know that's one of the you know um again as a small businessman that's i constantly have this gripe because even with this project i just did um for me, investing that much money in a, in a, a building that's not my own um, and having to deal with 10, 10 mass I have and all the issues that I have to go through as a small business, even in Boston period, um, that has its own um, roadblocks and red tapes. Um, and, and then different things, uh, all these different areas to get money and for me, it's a catch-22 is Can you hear me? Yeah, you just went out for a second, but you're back. Okay, as a, as a small business, it's, um, there's not many small business owners or entrepreneurs that I know personally that has great credit. So like, you know, when, when they're offering these loans, for example, the criteria is, just so just so ridiculous to me because you're offering a loan to a small business and you, you expect the small business to have great credit or you expect the small business to have um, you know the just some of the, the things that they're looking for to me it's you know I don't understand I've, I've always had a gripe with that because prior to Zaz I've had an outstanding credit <laughs> and I've, I've, I've owned property I've done different things and because you 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 have this passion to do this this thing whatever whatever craft or whatever it is, and you're blessed with that talent and you want to provide it to the public you know and you know in a lot of in a lot of ways you want to hold on to that business so in a lot of times you end up ruining your credit or you end up ruining your family's credit or whatever it is to try to hold on to the business and in in doing so it comes back to bite you because now they they're offering these different loans that you aren't unable to qualify for because you know your credit is messed up or something you know the, you you didn't have the right system in place to to have a bookkeeper or, or there's different things that you did that was inadequate before because you had to do what you had to do to survive and obviously i'm in year eight so i've, I've went through these process of learning as i go and and as you unfortunately as a small business when you learn as you go if you don't learn quick enough you lose money as you go and you're able to you know it's just it, it, it's, it's it's really it's really difficult for me that's that's really dead in my heart that topic because i feel a lot towards it and um even i looked at a i looked at one of the applications like uh, a couple of days ago with the sba loan i'm like this is this is crazy who's really going to qualify for that probably like a small percentage below 50 i would guess <laughs> if i were to say it you know and, and so um that's you know that's to me you know that's all of the topic but that would take a lot of time but um i think you know government assistance and so is a great thing uh, if, it, if it reaches the right people um, or if it reaches the masses and not the ones that are already doing great or established but the ones that are really struggling and not just struggling to bring people in the door but struggling to knowing uh procedures and keeping a business afloat you know what i'm saying like just, um you know, it's just that that topic is really, you know, it, it, it's uh, because I have a lot of friends um, that, that own salons, that own restaurants, um, and you know, that money only reach that money only reaches so far on so many people. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said before, you, you go through all these issues on top of the other issues with the tent and mass have and some of the some of the pitfalls, some of the roadblocks that's there. Um, it's it's very um, it's not easy, you know, trying to be successful or trying to do do things in a way of being, you know, feeding your family and so forth. So I've yeah. made it so far. Like I've said eight years has been a journey. Um, I have a lot of stories to tell about it uh, because it's you know it's it's good with the bad, but um, 
you know, I'm, I'm, I believe in God and I, I, I meditate a lot, I pray a lot. So that's helped me to kind of be, be at peace with a lot of things and, and keep my, keep my focus, but not, not everyone has that mentality. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. And I mean, it's hard even during, you know, quote unquote, normal times, much less now when everything is so much more restricted and people are really scared. So we want to try to help support you through this and just make sure we're lifting up the restaurants who are staying open right now as a almost as a public service to give people options and to keep folks fed and, and happy. Um, so I know you had told us once before. Tell us again on Instagram at Zaz Restaurant. Yes, on Instagram is Zaz Restaurant, uh, Z A Z uh, Restaurant. Um, on Facebook is Zaz Restaurant and Catering. On Facebook, um, we, we do a lot of stuff. We try to. I think I, I reached out to um, Councilor Arroyo this morning. I I placed a call, and I'm trying to see um, if I can even help assist in, in um, helping people of need that that may need food. Uh, the ones that are unable to provide, like the elderly or people who are really struggling at this time. I'm trying to use my platform in any way if I can even do personal delivery to people who are really in need during this time, and um, you know, and try to try to help in whatever we can. So a lot of times what's happening, what I notice is we'll have an, an egg, a few meals that's left over. And so um, I'll post a dozen. So I, I don't mind making even extra and try, try, to, try to help our people who are, who are in need, you know, during this time. Thank you so much, Ulri. I know you and the whole industry are incredibly generous and you get into this you know, not because of the profit margins, but to, to lift people up. Yeah, so exactly. we want to exactly. support you. Um, so thank you for joining us. We'll stay in touch and keep us updated. So in the meantime, thank order you. order yes. several days at a time and um, make sure we're keeping yeah. this, this great community institution going. All right. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.